We're on problem 21. Stan's solution to an equation is shown below. All right, and I haven't looked at it yet, but let's just see what they ask us. Which statement about Stan's solution is true? So let's just work through it and see if he got it right or if he made a mistake. So let's see, he did, let's just think about how we would do it. So if we had n plus 8 times n plus 20 is equal to 110. So the first thing you want to do is you'd want to distribute this 8 times n plus 20, right? You don't want to multiply this whole n plus 8. Remember, you're doing order of operations, so this multiplication first. So let's do that. So you get the n plus, and you distribute this 8. So it's 8n plus 160 is equal to 110, right? 8 times n plus 8 times 20 is 160. And already I see a discrepancy between ours and his. We have n there. We have plus 8n there. But where he has a 20, we have 160. He didn't distribute the 8. 8 times n plus 20 is 8n plus 160. So that's wrong. So he made a mistake in step 1. Unfortunately, he got all that other work that he had to do just because of his, it's all going to be wrong because of his mistake. Problem 22. When is the statement true? The opposite of a number is less than the original number. The opposite of a number is less than the original number. Well, let's, I mean, you know, if, if I have a negative number, the opposite of a negative is positive, so it's not going to be less. But if I have a positive number, then the opposite of it is negative, which is less than it, right? Because a negative is less than a positive. And you know, or if we say that if we say that x is greater than zero, right, then minus x is going to be less than x. Right? If we say x is positive, then definitely, you know, minus three is less than positive three. So the statement is true for positive numbers. So that's C. It's definitely not never true. I mean, you know, we showed a case where it's true. If I have positive three, negative three is less than that. Statement B, the statement is always true. Well, no, if we start with negative three, the opposite is going to be larger. The opposite is going to be ne positive three. And D, the statement is true for negative numbers. No, it's not. I mean, you know, negative three, the opposite is three, and that's larger than negative three. Problem 23. What is the y intercept of the graph? Okay, let me see. They say, so 23, they say, 4x plus 2y is equal to 12. So if you were to graph this line, not that I'm going to, you know, the y-intercept is when it intersects the y-axis. So it's that point there. It's what's this y-coordinate. And well, the x-coordinate, it's, it's when x is equal to 0, right? So it's going to be 0 comma some y-intercept. So the easiest thing to do is say, when x is equal to 0, what is y? So when x is equal to 0, this 4 times 0 is equal to 0, so that just becomes 0. So you get 2y is equal to 12. y is equal to 6. And that's choice C. All, right, all they want to know is, of this line, when x is equal to 0, what's y? That's what the y-intercept is. Next problem. OK, they've drawn us a graph. They say, let me copy and paste this one. OK. Copied it. OK, which inequality is shown on the graph below? So first of all, let's figure out the equation of this line right now. So what's its y-intercept, first of all? So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 1. So if we wanted to know, the, the if we put it in slope y-intercept form, the equation of really any line is y is equal to mx plus b where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept, right? Here, when x is 0, y is negative 1. So the y-intercept is minus 1. So b is minus 1. So we know that y is equal to mx minus 1. And now we just have to figure out the slope. And the slope is just change in y for given change in x, right? So if we say change in y for given change in x, is equal to, let's see, when I increase x by 2, when I increase x by 2, I increase y by 1. So change in y is 1 when the change in x is 2. I mean, you could say when you increase x by 4, right, I'm going 4 spots, I increase y by 2. So you could have done that. You could have said change in y over change in x is 2 over 4, which is also equal to 1 half. But either way, the equation, we now know the slope. The slope is change in y over change in x. 
So the equation of the line is y is equal to 1 half x minus 1. That's the equation of this line. Now they want to know what the equation of the inequality is. So first of all, they're including, you know, they have this gray area and they put this line in bold. So that means that we're including the line. If they had drawn a dotted line here, that means we're not including the line. But since they're including the line, it's going to be either greater than or less than or equal to. That equal to is because we're including the line. But just think about it. Is it is so our choices are y is greater than or equal to one half x minus one, or y is less than or equal to one half x minus one. Now think about for any given x, right? Let's say when x is equal to two. Right? When x is equal to two, if you put if you put it into this equation, you get y is equal to zero, and that's this point on the line. Now is the gray area all y values greater than zero? Or all y values less than zero. Well, clearly, it's all y values greater than zero, right? It's all the y values above the y value dictated by this equation. So it's going to be the equation of this line is going the equation of this inequality or this area is y is greater than one half x minus one. And just a very easy way to eyeball it is okay. They're including the line, so I'm going to have this equal then. It's going to either be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And since it's the area above the line. Right above the line is going to be greater than or equal to, and that is choice D. Choice D. Next problem, problem 25. This is another one where I think it makes sense to copy and paste it. It's a big one. Okay. Which best represents the graph of y is equal to 2x minus 2? So the slope is 2, it's positive 2, and its y-intercept is minus 2. So the y-intercept is easy to eyeball. So the y-intercept here, the y-intercept is minus 2. That's right. Here it's minus 2 as well. In both of these, the y-intercept is plus 2. So neither of these are going to, right? It intersects the y-axis at positive 2. But we know that the y-intercept is minus 2. So we know. Whoops, where did I go? There we go. So we know our choices are one of the first top two. It's either A or C. And which of these has a positive slope? It's a positive slope of two. Well, in choice A, when I when I go to the right by two, I go up by four. Right. So change in y over change in x. I go up by four. When I go up in x by two, I go up in y by four. When I go up in x by two, so the slope is two. So this has a positive slope of two, so that's choice A. But just for seeing why choice C doesn't work or figuring out the slope, think about it this way: If I start, let me start at a random point here. If I increase my x values by, if I increase x value by two, what's happening to my y value? Is it increasing by two or is it decreasing by two? Well, it's decreasing. Well, it's decreasing by four. It's decreasing at twice the rate. It's decreasing by four. So in this case, change in y over change in x. Whenever x is positive two, right? We increased by two here. What happened to y? It went down four. So here the slope is minus two. And you can look at that. You can kind of eyeball it because it's going from the top left to the bottom right. So it's going to be a negative number. But the easiest way I always do is to draw these arrows and say, okay, when I increase x, y is decreasing. So that's going to be a negative slope. Let's do it. So the answer was A. Next problem. OK, so they're giving us another one of these where they shaded a graph. These are good. Thank God I have the cut and paste feature. OK. So they ask us, which inequality does the shaded region of the graph represent? So once again, it'll be good just to figure out which of what, what the equation of this line is. We can immediately say, OK, the y-intercept is 2. And what's its slope? When x increases by 1, when x increases by 1, what happens to y? y is going down by 3, right? So the y-intercept is equal to 2. We figure that out. b is equal to 2. The slope is equal to change in y over change in x. When x increases by 1, 
the slope, the sorry, the change in y is minus three. It goes down by three. So the slope is equal to minus three. So the equation of this line is y is equal to minus three x plus two, right? Mx plus b. And if I look at the choices already, that it looks a little bit different than that, but we'll get to that. But let's see what the inequality is. So first of all, it's going to be a, either a greater than or equal or less than or equal, and we say the or equal because they filled in the line. So let's think about it. For any, if we pick any x, right? Say when x is equal to two, then according to this equation, according to this line, y would be equal to minus four. Now, are we including the y's that are greater than that value as well, or are we including the y's that are less than that value? Well, we're including the ones that are less than that point for a given x. So the shaded region is y is less than or equal to minus 3x plus 2. And you can eyeball this. You can kind of say, oh, you know, this is below the graph. So it's less than or equal. And that equal is because they shaded in the line. If it was a dotted line, it would just be less than. But once again, this isn't the exact format that they have here. They put all the x's and the y's on the same side, and we can do that. Let's just add 3x to both sides of this equation, and you get 3x plus y is less than or equal to, when you add 3x on the right-hand side, that just becomes 0. So less than or equal to 2. And that is 3x plus y is less than or equal to positive 2. And that is choice A. And I'm all out of time. See you in the